Hey there, I'm Daniel, uh, and today we have a project that's a little bit bigger than uh, our usual little projects. Uh, remember on that video on the rear suspension where I told you it's only a matter of time until the other one fails? Well, another one failed, just not the other side. This time it's the front one. Um, our shock blew out, uh, I was just driving along and suddenly it sounded like a little balloon, you know, when you let the air escape and uh, make that horrible sound. So I knew it was uh, the front driver's side suspension that needs to come out. And because we already did the rear one, the front one I don't think can be that much more difficult. But we're about to find out. Let's get to it. So here's what we got. This suspension, for some reason, looks a lot smaller than the rear one. That's it. Um, I picked this up at Advanced Auto Parts for about $350. Um, that included the $50 core and that included a 25% coupon and a $40 rebate that I earned when we changed out uh, the battery on the Dodge Journey. So uh, by the time we're done, it should be only about $285 to do this. So if you go to a Mercedes dealer, if they even do just a shock, uh, you'll be in well over $1,200. So we got almost $1,000 saved right off the get-go. Let's get the car jacked up. So the moment I lift up the car, you can hear the air escaping. That's a good way of knowing which shock actually is bad. If I would have lifted up the other one, it probably wouldn't make the sound. Um, so very easy way to diagnose if the suspension, the strut itself, is actually blown. So listen up. All right, so check this out. We're under the hood. Here's where the strut is. We're gonna take this off. This is where the airline comes through. And pop this off, and that should be it for the top. The only thing that we have to do is pop the wheel off, pop off the little knuckle that's behind it, and it should be easy peasy, other than just trying to find a way to wiggle that thing out. For safety purposes, we're gonna have to put some jack stands underneath the car. So, because this uh, lift, I guess, the hydraulic lift could fail at any time. And uh, to make sure it doesn't fail, I'll put on some jack stands. Now, even jack stands, once they're too old, I wouldn't trust them too much. So, we gotta try to find at least a couple of points to secure the car on. All right, let's take a look at what's going on here. So, the suspension is bolted up into the top, uh, just as we said. Down here, all this, it just completely is a mess. It's just old, um, it's completely brittle. And the moment I lifted up the car, there's a puddle that came out, probably out of the shock, I would imagine, uh, because this is all wet. So that's probably our problem. So in the top, we have only three bolts that holds this whole suspension in. On the bottom, however, unlike in the rear, we have these uh, screws, bolts, whatever you want to call them. So we'll have to come and uh, take it out. It should be much simpler than I expected. I think the rear uh, is probably a lot harder to do. Um, so let's see, let's get it done. We're gonna have to spray a little bit this on it and let some magic happen. All right, so while the penetrating fluid down below is doing its penetrating, uh, we're gonna start opening up the airline and those bolts and release the shock from there and hopefully by then We'll be able to crack those uh, little bolts open, okay?
Okay, I'm gonna leave a little bit on here so it still holds the shock while we try to release the bottom. Alright, here's my status right now. Um, I couldn't get those little bolts uh, to come out, so I used a little bit a uh, stronger tool and it broke off. Then, while I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do on one side, I did the other side and it broke off as well. So, I think I'm going to have to drill it out. Um, let's see if we're going to have any success with that. Alright, here we go. Uh, it is the next day. Um, I stripped the bolt coming out because I wasn't careful. Um, I used inferior tools. There's so something to be said about using good tools. Um, and I'm, I'm all about saving money and buying cheap crap whenever I can. In this case, it bit me in the ass and it took me a couple hours to drill out the bolts. So I ended up drilling out the bolts and uh, finally it's free. So let's get back to it. Thank you. 
All right, so everything is put back together. Uh, I didn't lower it all the way. I don't want to bottom out the shock. So I left it a little bit jacked up. I'm going to turn off the turn on the car and see if it's going to lift itself off the ground. Alright, so here we go. Uh, this could have been a 20 minute job if uh, I wouldn't have to mess with strip bolts. Uh, I attacked it the wrong way. I should have heated it up, loosened it a little bit, but in my uh, anxiety to get things done, I just went in there with a tool that was stronger than the bolt and I pulled it and the tool broke and it stripped the, the thread. So, two hours. I was drilling through the bolts. That's how hard they are. And I went through three sets of drills. Uh, I even got a bolt extractor. Uh, I mean, those bolts are so hard. Uh, it's really, really tough to drill through them. Um, but we finally made it. Uh, the moment I drilled through it, it just popped right out. And this is the old shock. So this is where it failed. This attaches down to here, but it's separated. So watching on YouTube, there's some people that put RTV sealant or whatever it is that they put on there and it just doesn't work. You have to get a new one. Um, I got mine at Advanced Auto Parts and I think it retails for like 350 or 370. But take advantage of coupons wherever you can. Um, I usually like to buy off of Amazon because it makes me feel comfortable, deliver straight to your door. But they didn't have any discounts. And by the time I'm done, by the time I return this and get the core back, I'd be in about $278 or $287. I'll put it in the description what the final price was. If the bolt would have come out easier, I probably would have been done in two hours. Um, so uh, that's it. Uh, we've got two new shocks on this car. Well, actually three because the previous owner uh, replaced the front passenger side one. So the only one that could possibly fail now is the one in the back. And just wanted to mention, People complain that these go back. It's a Mercedes thing. Ah, what a bad design. Um, this one's 15 years old. The other one failed at 14 years old and the front right one was replaced after it was 13 years old. If you think that you can drive around with a regular car with a regular suspension and have it more than 10 or 12 or 13 years old and still work properly, you're, you're big, uh, gravely mistaken. So um, this just failed. Uh, due to age, like any other suspension does. Uh, if you like to convert everything to springs, you gotta make sure you get sway bars in it. This car doesn't have sway bars because the air suspension basically keeps everything level and it messes up the ride. The reason you buy this car is because it rides so smooth. You want a little bit of sport in your ride, you set it to sport one or sport two and it's rock hard if that's what you prefer. But all things considered, Paying about $300 a corner, if you would have to replace all four, that's $1,200. That's pretty much the price of a set of decent coil springs. Why would you go to coil springs? And then, if you do coil springs, you have to replace everything. Weld in a sway bar, do all those things that, hey, just change them out when they fail. Maybe once uh, every decade or so, and you got a perfectly good driving car. So, that being said, you got, I hope this video helped you guys. Uh, good luck out there. See you next time.